Hello. Um, I wanted to, to make a special video today talking about um, the rate of learning, the learning rate as far as uh, languages are concerned, but not only uh, languages. Well, insofar as languages are concerned, you can, we can distinguish, we can generally distinguish three phases, and this is a common, uh, commonly accepted fact. Um, the elementary phase, the intermediate phase, and the advanced uh, phase. Um, right now, I just wrote, uh, I just, uh, I've drawn this, uh, this special, uh, special graph here. Um, I, I just uh, bought a blackboard. I thought it was like a very good idea uh, to have it aboard. And um, we can distinguish uh, three phases, as I said, the commonly accepted phases, and I actually kind of agree about this. Um, and you can you can you can tell the difference between uh, you can you can say that you can tell that there's a learning rate. It means that this is the efficiency of your learning process. In the elementary phase, uh, the elementary phase is uh, has a few uh, features. The your learning rate is is low. It means that it's, it is not quite efficient. And this is uh, obvious because uh, from a scientific point of view. One can argue that uh, the problem uh, consists of the fact that uh, neurons, uh, interactions between neurons and act are not activated. It means that we're still building a net here. We're just trying to figure out how um, things sound in the language. There are quite, you know, weird sounds to our brain because we're used to different sounds. Um, and. Uh, grammatical structures and words uh, themselves, especially in languages were very, very different from ours. Um, for example, Arabic or Chinese um, and other difficult languages. In the in intermediate phase, things uh, start to get slightly better, but the learning rate is still a little bit low. We have uh, two zones. I can distinguish in general. We can distinguish this zone and this other zone. It's like low intermediate and high intermediate. And at this point, uh, we start figuring out a lot of things of the language, which is the, the, the called uh, intermediate phase, but still we're not fluent yet, the so-called fluency. Um, I call this phase deliberate learning. Deliberate learning means that um, in this phase, and I will discuss this in the next videos, uh, each for every uh, phase, we're doing, uh, we're learning deliberately. We're using books, uh, we're using language grammars, we're using uh, Asimov, we're using teacher self. We're using things to get accustomed with language. They're guiding us because they, there are authors who wrote, uh, who just established patterns for us, and we're just following them. We're not autonomous. There comes a point here, uh, which is called epiphany point in literature, uh, where a kind of a linguistic um, explosion happens and you find yourself autonomous. It means that you have accumulated a lot of knowledge and at this point, at this precise point, um, things start getting uh, very easy. We don't know why, but that's that's the way it happens. It means that we have learned, uh, we spend hours and hours trying to figure out how the language works in the elementary phase, in the intermediate phase. I don't know how long this will take, but it will take a little bit and it depends on how much time and how much energy and above all how you learn. So this point which is called the epiphany point and we could pass this point we could call themselves fluent in a way according to my vision at least. Uh, this is called a deliberate learning as I said it's phase one and phase two and when you're linguistically autonomous it means that you're well, you find yourself in the advanced phase. This doesn't mean that you stop learning. We never stop learning. But the thing is that past this point we're autonomous. It means that we find, for example, I'll, uh, let's consider Chinese. You find a word, you, you just figured out a lot of characters, how they work and how they sound and what they mean. And you find other characters, you put them together and you understand the meaning without consulting any vocabulary. This is, cool. this is not just a small example to make you understand what I mean by autonomy. And, and at this point, the rate of learning is uh, almost vertical. It's, it's exponential because you learn things at a fast rate. You talk to foreigners, you retain words that you didn't retain before. At this point, the people who are like frustrated send me messages and they say, why can't I just recall things? This is the argument. Uh, this will be the subject of another video, which is uh, which will have to do with memory. And you'll find quite some 
some some surprises, a few surprises there. So I was saying, in, in general, this is a graph. Uh, to recap, this is a graph that uh, that explains um, the uh, learning rate and the time and the efficiency. The learning rate comes as uh, as the efficiency of learning and acquiring a language. There are three main phases. The two main phases are deliberate learning. Uh, the, the two first phases, which is the first elementary and intermediate, and the, 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 the reason why a lot of people give up is because the, the rate is low, uh, the efficiency of learning is a little bit low. But depending on how much time uh, you uh, dedicate to a language and how you do it, this is very important. It's not just a matter of learning, of reading and listening, and I will explain this in another video too. You will get to this point which is called the epiphany point and at this point when you start talking to foreigners or reading books uh, all you have to do is um, keeping the language alive and expanding it you will do it much more easily than you you'd ever done before and this is called linguistic autonomy so um, I will discuss uh, the uh, the things this is just a, a general description of the whole process and in the next videos I'll discuss what you should do here here and here. So thank you so much for listening to me and we will talk uh, and we'll meet up in the next videos. Bye.